Hey y'all, Dave Vasco's here. Today's video is about attic, bathroom, plumbing. Every great attic renovation needs a bathroom so you don't have to keep running downstairs for, you know, whatever reason you might need to run downstairs. And I'm gonna tell you how I did it and show you some drawings since my project is really finished. So, here we go. Okay, so here we are in the attic bathroom. The joists run this way. They are all two by sixes, and if you haven't seen my other video, they are double joisted, and the knee walls are turned into box beams, and the double joists are hung by joist hangers to give the floor more sturdiness so they don't bounce at all. The thing about the bathroom is you are probably not going to be able to get the plumbing you need within the joist bays if they're two by six, which is why I have mine padded out. So real quick, let me just explain. In this one joist bay, this drain flows through the joist bay and meets up to the toilet drain here. There's a gentle Y that sweeps in and they both go to a stack that's in the wall. And I'll show you what that looks like in some drawings. Now the sink over here, it goes into the wall and it goes around through this wall right here behind the knee wall and there's a gentle bend that goes behind the knee wall and another gentle bend that comes in and joins up with the stack right here everything exits right here and the stack vents just through the roof right right there the fresh water also comes up right behind this wall and it branches off this way and that way, hot and cold, and goes into here for the shower valve. And there's a video on that if you care to watch it. And then it goes this way, comes out at the toilet, keeps coming around here and comes out, as you can see, under the sink. So the way the floor is done is to get the height you need for the drainage. I think these drains are actually roughly about six feet apart. They were just within code or right around code. So they were able to squeak by, I guess. But um, I did not want my drains to go through the floor. But for one reason, you're not supposed to cut holes in the center of joists as it weakens them. For another thing, I only had two by six joists, so I was determined to go around the outside of the knee wall. Now, if you live in a cold climate, you're gonna probably want a blanket insulation. So, the way I built this floor up, and I'll explain this better in the drawings, is beneath here, on top of the joist, I glued and screwed a one by layer and a two by layer so that is built up one and a half plus three quarters so two and a quarter on top of the joist there and i will show you like i said in the drawings exactly how this was done so hopefully you can understand my artwork here this is the part of the attic where the bathroom is going or has gone so there's the knee wall there are the rafters, That's, that'll eventually be the sloping ceiling there. And these are the joists, which I already showed doubled. So those are doubled two by six floor joists right there. So the reason I picked this spot is because I already had plumbing in this wall. The stairwell is over here. There's a bathroom just below this. So all the plumbing and all was easy to access. And in the basement, the hot water heater and everything is also just below this. So all my plumbing is stacked in my house. So the first thing I did after, of course, I had double joisted the entire attic. And if you want to see how I did the um, 
supported the floor better. There's a video on the knee wall and actually supporting the joist mid span by um, turning the knee wall into a box beam and adding joist hangers. Another video, I'll put a link to it up here in the corner. Um, first of all, I determined where I wanted my bathroom to go. I wanted to go here. I want, of course, wall, the walls to fall on joists. And then I determined where my inside wall was gonna go and I snapped a line there. So this is where the inside wall would go. This is the door going in. And we have to have blocking underneath every wall. So I installed blocking between the joists where my new wall was gonna go. So I snapped a line, say right here, where my new wall was gonna go and added blocking between all the joists and added blocking beneath the knee wall. So here you see the blocking installed underneath the walls and after I did the blocking I started padding it out now some people say you know it would have been easier to just use deeper joists and sister on deeper joists to the existing joists but I had already double joisted my entire attic or at least this section of my entire of my attic with two by sixes and they run from a hall wall outside here all the way to an exterior wall over there so I would have ended up I didn't want to raise the floor in the rest of the the attic suite I just wanted the floor raised in the bathroom itself so to sister deeper joists just wouldn't have worked for me this this was the best way to do it for my purposes and if I tried to scab on deeper joists on after I'd already double joisted then I would have three three pieces of stock thick across every single one of these, which just wouldn't have worked. So if anybody's wondering why I did it this way, that's why, but you might choose to do it another way. So after I did that, I glued and screwed or glued and nailed a one by four all the way around on all the double joists and all the outside walls. And then on top of that, I glued and screwed two by four. So the reason you want to glue and screw everything is because there are so many points of contact when you have so many layers here that something is going to squeak if you don't glue everything. So the glue, you know, be generous with the glue and nail and screw everything, every layer. All right, this drawing shows the plumbing in the stairwell wall. So there's my stack that goes out the roof and this is my fresh hot and cold water over here coming in. This is where the toilet's going to go. This is where the shower is going to go. So you can see they're in the same bay. This has a trap and that that's really why I needed the depth here. I needed to go above the regular two by six height. This this was tight as well. You might have been able to squeeze in the toilet plumbing without raising it but this definitely um, made it a lot easier and, and I don't think it would have worked very well with just two by sixes. So this has just enough pitch to meet this bin and they exit into the stack. Now the plumbing for the sink. Now here, and I've highlighted all the drain plumbing here, um, I add the sink over here. I use a revented system so there are several ways you can do this. You can use studer vents or air admittance valves, but you have to have access in the wall to get to it, to change it, clean it, whatever you need to do. Or you can vent all the way out your roof, but I didn't want to add another um, hole in my roof. So I used larger pipe. I think I had to use larger pipe. So this is two and a half inch pipe. And I used a reventing system. So, so the sink drains out here that way and this is just to allow air into the system to allow it to drain better. You can see the hot and cold water. This is where they come through the knee wall. This is where they go out the knee wall. Here's where the toilet valve is. So all that runs behind the knee wall. And the drain, of course, is in a gentle, I have a gentle bend where the drain goes behind the knee wall. And it's pitched, you know, of course, an inch per four feet or a quarter inch per foot all the way back to the stack over here. So that is basically it. Uh, after this, you know, I added the, the actual walls on top 
of the floor and trimmed it all out as you can see in the video. For me at least, the attic bathroom was the scariest part about the whole attic renovation and that's because you know you're pumping water all the way up to the top of your house and draining it back down again and should anything fail you know you can cause a lot of damage throughout the house but I highly recommend doing it if you just plan everything out carefully take your time making all the plumbing connections test everything test the drains test the fresh water before you install the floors and the drywall and everything as long as you check all that, it will be fine.